All right, I told you all I'd show you how to recurve a DuraSpark distributor. Um, you only have to have a few simple hand tools to do it. One thing I want to say before we get started here is, you know, the DuraSparks get a lot of negative comments. People don't like them. The DuraSpark distributor is, or the DuraSpark system is actually a great system. Where they get a bad rap is, you know, they, they use that square ignition module that's mounted on the inner fender usually. And let's, you get one that goes bad. Well, people run over AutoZone and buy one for $16 and put it on there, and it wouldn't last a month or two. And, uh, you know, people, oh, Endure Sparks are junk. But no, the replacement box you bought was junk. I've seen original Endure Spark ignition modules that are 30 and 40 years old and are still working. I have one on my truck right now currently that's um, 12 years old, and it, but it's a Borg Warner Select. I give about $50 for it. And you can still get the, the original Motorcraft one. Um, so don't waste your time buying the $16, $20, $30 modules. They're junk. They're garbage. They're not going to last no time. Yeah, Buy a good one and you'll see that they last a really really long time okay with that being said let's get started right here you can see there's an e-clip right there that's on your uh, vacuum advance just want to unhook that e-clip make sure you don't lose it Now we're going to undo the vacuum advance. Now for the sake of this video, I'm not going to replace this vacuum advance, but generally when I do this, I always replace this pickup coil and this vacuum advance. And the same thing goes for that pickup coil. Don't buy one of those cheap 10 15 dollar pickup coils buy a good one because all you're doing is setting yourself up to be broke down somewhere down the road in three or four months because there is a difference in electronics i mean it, electronics is one of those things that's true you get what you pay for all right this one's still got the original tag on it all right and just kind of Tilt it up just a little bit. There we go. And just slide it straight out. Now this next part, I want to try to get it on film here. I don't know if I can or not though. Because you got to pry this off. Now before you do that, you see a slot right here. There's a roll pin right there. It's kind of hard to get it on the camera, but there's a roll pin. Make sure you mark, you can scratch it or take a paint pen, whatever, but mark where that roll pin is because see there is a slot on this side also. But you want to put it back where it was originally because that can change your uh, phasing. And then take a screwdriver, actually a pair of screwdrivers. or in my case, a brake spoon. And pry it up off there. Let me tilt this camera up so you can see a little bit better. Alright. 
this pried up off off the shaft. It'll come just straight up. You might, if yours is rusty, you might want uh, the distributor shaft itself is rusty. You might want to take a little sandpaper or a scotch brite pad and just run around it and polish that shaft up for before you try that. Now, as you can see, that roll pin come out, but just hang on to it. Don't lose it. Now let me tilt this camera back down. Okay. Now I'll switch over to a Phillips bit. And first remove a screw right here. And you'll have to turn it, well, and pull it up out of there. Because you can then pull this pigtail out, or pull it up anyway. Then you'll have to turn the module a little bit to get to the other screw. There it is. Once you have those two screws out, just pull the plate straight up out of there. Now here's where we get into the fun part. Right here is what actually controls your mechanical advance. You see this one has a 16L, it's kind of hard to see, but 16L and then on this side, which is you see this pin is sticking up right there so that's the side of this this come out of a uh, 86 model motorhome you can see it says 21L okay that's actually how much mechanical advance it has but you double whatever number is in here so 21L that's actually 42 degrees of mechanical advance and that's not counting the initial advance you know, like when you uh, set the timing at idle with the marks on the harmonic balancer. You know, let's say 10 degrees. Okay, so it'd be 10 plus 42. That's 52 degrees of total advance. That is way, way, way too much. Um, even on this side, if I was to change it to the 16L, that's still 32 degrees, which would work, but you would have to set the initial at 4 degrees. Yeah, you because know, most most engines are going to like somewhere around 36 or 38. That's still way too, you know. I ain't gonna say way too much, but that's not enough initial, especially if you're running an aftermarket cam. So what you do in a case like that is go to the junkyard and find you another one that has this one has a 13L which would give us 26 degrees now this side originally had an 18L on it as you can see I welded that up that way should I need the 13L side I've still got it but I know I'm never going to need the 18L I welded this one up to uh, 0.410 which is how wide the slot is for a 10L, which will give us 20 degrees of mechanical. So I could set the initial at 16 plus 20 and come in at 36. All right, now we got down this far. Um, you want to remove these two uh, advanced springs. Most of the time it's easier just to use your fingers than it is to get a pair of needle nose in there and grab them. Take the heavier spring out and just toss it to the side 
because you're not going to be reusing it. The lighter spring of the two we're going to reuse, so be kind of easy with it. And sometimes it's, it'll try to turn, so you have to use two hands. Now that you got those out, it's kind of hard to see. I'm using my phone for a flashlight here so you can see it better. There's a clip down in there. You got to remove that clip. So take a pair of needle nose. This is going to be hard to film, so but you'll see what I'm talking about when you tear it down and get into it. Just grab that clip with a pair of needle nose and just pull. It's just a little wire clip and it'll pull out. There it is. Now you see this is the one that had uh, the piece of rubber on it to stop right there. So you want to turn the slot that you're going to use to that. Oh, well, before I do that, I always like to take a little Q-tip with some silicone brake grease because it won't get hard and seize up. But always make sure that there's grease underneath these weights. Don't take much, just a little bit. Alright. Then slide that back down. put our springs back on there we one spring and on the other side one of the Mr. Gasket 925D advanced springs and check it make sure it's working okay Now comes the part of putting that little clip back in. I don't know that I'll be able to film it because usually I use a small screwdriver and a pick, a pick to put it back in because there's really not much room in there to fit anything else. What I do is I hold the screwdriver on one side of it and then use the pick to uh, grab it and pull it over till it clip, uh, snaps into place. Okay, now that's all back, or that's in, we've got it back, that part of it back together. Drop the pickup coil and plate back in. Line the screws up. Now what you want to do, kind of hold the plate still. And spin that thing around to where you can get to the screw. like that all right because if you put the bottom one in first you can't get to the upper one it back around and drop the pigtail in 
and put the other screw in. And while we got that done, I want to go ahead and put the vacuum advance on because it's easier to do it now than it is with that stator in the way. Just hold that there. Now I know there's some people say don't use vacuum advance or whatever. On the street it does help, but you're going to have to fine tune it. Most of them have an Allen screw that you can get to through there. And you can adjust the uh, amount of travel that this has by adjusting that. Alright, now that we got that vacuum advance hooked back up, it's time to put that little E-clip in. And the magnet off the pickup coil always makes that fun, let me just tell you. You can just kind of get it started. Now, you remember we made that mark on the uh, stator? I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there you can. Because see, there's a slot on each side, but I marked which one lines up with the uh, slot in the distributor. Slide that back down. Line it up. And then. Take that little roll pin. I'll try not to drop it like I just did. Just take a screwdriver. There it is. And that's how you recurve a Dura, Dura spark distributor. I don't know what I was saying. If you want to adjust the tension on the springs, you see that square hole right there? Turn it until you'll see the, uh, right there's one of them. That's where the end of the spring hooks, and you can reach in there with a screwdriver and bend that outer end to control how fast the advance comes in. And of course, you got one on each side. So, there you go. Have fun.